In this week's video, we'll walk through the easy to understand and important story being told by monthly charts. To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. It's a monthly chart of the S&P 500 index as of the close on November 30th. Since monthly charts only record one data point per month, it is best to review them once a month and at month's end. We know the S&P has been in that long-term consolidation box. We broke above the box. This looks like somewhat of a retest and we printed a higher high above this high in the month of November. This indicator down here is monthly MACD. If we zoom in a little closer to MACD in the present day, we can see, much like many of the charts that we've covered in recent videos, there's a lot of indecisiveness here, bullish cross, bearish cross, and now we have a bullish cross at the end of the month. So we have indecisiveness relative to trends and momentum. However, the bulls won the battle at the end of the month. All things being equal, if you're a bull, you'd prefer to see black over red. If you're a bear, you'd prefer this look here with black underneath red. If we take a big step back looking at a monthly chart going back to 1993, and this again is monthly MACD, and mark this chart up in somewhat of a noisy manner, but it's easy to understand. The red vertical line here denotes a bearish cross on MACD, telling us that momentum is waning and the trend is waning. The green vertical lines shown, these are the bullish crosses on MACD where black goes above red. For the most part, when you get a bullish black over red signal on monthly MACD for the S&P 500, after that, the probability of good things happening is higher. Here's another bullish cross. After that, good things happened. Here's a bullish cross here in 2003. After that, good things happened. Cross, good things, bullish cross, good things. We have a bullish cross again in the present day. When we get a bearish cross, typically you get either sideways movement or unpleasant movement. Bearish cross, unpleasant movement, bearish consolidation, bearish here, and we've had a mixture of pain and consolidation in 2015 and 2016. Our confidence in any signal, chart, or indicator rises. We're more confident when we see similar things on multiple time frames. So when the daily, weekly, and monthly charts are all telling us the same things, our confidence is higher. Monthly charts tend to be late. We tend to use them more for a confirming signal. You can see here in 2009, you get the bullish cross. It's late to the party. The S&P 500 has already rallied strongly off the low. And in the present day, if we look at our accounts, we haven't been waiting for this bullish cross, but it is good to see and it does tell us that the monthly charts are starting to line up with what we've seen on both the daily and the weekly charts. While this is a relatively short period in market history, it's pretty easy to see that the present day long-term consolidation probably looks most like the period that we've talked about many times in the past, the 1993 to 1995 period. Here, when the market breaks to the upside, MACD gives you the bullish confirmation with a bullish cross with black going above red. After that, the probability of good things happening was higher and indeed good things did happen. Should also be noted that the bullish MACD cross on a monthly chart is relatively rare. There have only been six of them now going back to 1993, six clear and sustained signals. We did get a little bit of a fake out here before the dot-com bust and we did get a little bit of a fake out earlier in 2016, and we've been moving sideways that we've shown before. Fair question might be, if we have a fake out here and a fake out here, 
What are the odds that this happens next? Well, we're always open to all outcomes and we're not forecasting. However, started working on Wall Street back here in 1994 and I know definitively that the market's profile here is quite a bit different than the profile that we have today. The profile here, you're rolling over from growth-oriented assets and the market is transitioning toward defensive assets, much like the transition that we saw early in calendar year 2016. As we will cover in this video, that's not what we have here in the present day. The easy takeaway here is when black goes above red, we're basically seeing improvement in the market from a trend perspective and from a momentum perspective. And it really doesn't matter how we count, whether it's six, eight, or 10, the reality is it's a relatively rare occurrence to get a bullish MACD cross on a monthly chart. Since we understand the basic concepts here, we can move much more quickly through these charts. This is the NASDAQ at the end of November, still somewhat of a tentative look, but black did close above red and a bullish cross was nailed down at the end of the month. Momentum and trends in the Dow are much more favorable. When we have more white space between the two, that denotes a stronger trend and stronger momentum. The Dow too has nailed down a bullish cross on MACD as of November 30th. If we look at asset class behavior, we've been talking about energy and base metals. Energy has black above red on the monthly chart. Base metals has the higher probability look on the monthly chart. We've covered SP high beta quite a bit since the election. Here, we're underneath. This is the lower probability look here in early August. And now you can see somewhat of the transition with the trends and the momentum improving for higher beta sectors or economically sensitive sectors, especially relative to defensive sectors. Here's an example of an economically sensitive sector. This is a good look on the monthly MACD for materials XLB in the ETF world. We'll contrast these charts with some defensive and risk on risk off charts, which will help us learn a lot about the market's risk reward profile from a longer term perspective, looking at monthly momentum and trends. XME mining stocks. This is really base metals and precious metals mining stocks. Black well above red. This is a stronger trend and stronger momentum. Copper looks like it's turning up here and starting a stronger trend late in calendar year 2016. Small caps, a lot of white space between the black and the red lines here and a monthly higher high. Same thing with mid cap stocks. We've talked a little bit about the Trump platform in recent weeks and how that might benefit small caps and mid caps relative to large caps. This looks good as well. We have a lot of sector rotation going on. So your S&P 500 and your total stock market and your equal weight still have a good look. We have black above red, black above red, but there's more hesitancy in here because the defensive sectors are built into these ETFs. How does the look of the total stock market for monthly MACD as of the close on November 30th compared to some defensive assets such as bonds. If we look at TLT in isolation, you can see heading into the election, we still had positive trends and positive momentum from a longer term perspective as measured by monthly MACD. Now we have the bearish cross where black is below red and red is rolling over here. This is TLT as of November 30th. If we look at it from a risk off versus risk on, perspective, you can see it too is rolling over in favor of energy over bonds. Looking at defensive instruments here, the VIX fear index also has the bearish MACD look. Utilities with the thought of interest rates rising and maybe higher inflation rolling over this month that nailed down a bearish monthly MACD cross XLU as of November 30th. 
Obviously, these are longer term signals and they really speak to probabilities looking out months and years. These charts don't tell us much about what's going to happen next Monday or next week. Defensive consumer staples were a darling earlier in calendar year 2016. Now we have a flip where black is below red on the monthly chart. If we look at risk off versus risk on, so we're comparing the consumer staples sector that's within the S&P 500 to the entire index. This is telling us that the probability of good things happening for the S&P 500 index looking out months and years with this look is higher than the probability of good things happening for defensive staples, especially from a relative perspective. Defensive staples under this scenario could go up, but the odds are that the S&P 500 index would outperform defensive staples. Healthcare, another defensive sector within the S&P 500, black below red. Healthcare versus the S&P 500, this also favors the broader index relative to the more defensive sector. If we flip it over now to risk on stocks relative to risk off bonds in 2016, you can see the transition here. Our monthly MACD really favors bonds from a trend and momentum perspective over stocks. That's not the case anymore with the black line turning up, the red line turning up, and we get the bullish cross on monthly MACD. And we have white space in here now, and that's in the history books. It can't be erased for the month of November. How does this look here as of November 30th, so just two calendar days ago, compare to the look of monthly MACD for stocks versus bonds at two major turning points? This is the exact same ratio with the exact same monthly MACD. You can see late in calendar year 2007, you get the bearish cross. That was very, very helpful. Really bad things happened in calendar year 2008. And when trends and momentum started to improve in 2009 in favor of SPY over TLT, black turned up, red turned up, black moved above red, and then we had white space here telling us that the probability of good things happening in terms of stocks outperforming bonds was higher here than it was here. It's fairly obvious the present day in 2016 looks much more like this favorable turn in 2009 than this unfavorable turn late in calendar year 2007 before the financial crisis. We'll cover a few charts here that can help us with basic concepts on comparing sectors head to head. We did reduce our tech exposure a little bit late in the week, probably moved it roughly from about 14% of our portfolio down to roughly 12. And that includes the entire portfolio. Instruments like SPY and VTI have exposure to tech, and we talk about a 14% exposure to 12% exposure approximately, we're talking about the weighted average of our entire portfolio looking at tech exposure in all of the ETFs. So this is VGT relative to materials. You can see the ratio made a lower high here. And in calendar year 2016, we have a bearish cross. It looked like tech was going to try to turn again and make a bullish cross, but it was pretty much rejected here. And as of December 1st, we have that bearish look. December 1st for VGT relative to XLF. And of course, this looks very, very similar to the chart at the end of November. This is tech relative to financials. The look has flipped from favoring tech from a trend momentum perspective long term to now favoring XLF or financials. Doesn't necessarily mean we're down on tech and we still own tech. It just talks about weightings. These charts are telling us it probably makes some sense to maybe cut back here and add a little here and add a little here. Same could be said for several other sectors within the SP high beta ETF. Speak of the devil, 
tech VGT relative to SP high beta. You can see we just recently had the transition here favoring the higher beta sectors over the technology sector. Same thing with base metals. This is a relatively strong trend with relatively strong momentum in favor of base metals over tech. When we look at these type of charts, we're talking about the probabilities of base metals outperforming tech. Under that scenario, base metals and tech can both go up. Base metals might go up 20% and tech might go up 10 as an anecdotal and hypothetical example. Technology has been duking it out versus mid caps here. The ratio makes a higher high and we have a negative momentum divergence with MACD monthly making a lower high. We also have the bearish cross in favor of mid caps over tech. Same story over here. This is a divergence price. The ratio makes a higher high. MACD makes a lower high. And now we have white space and a bearish look. If you're relatively new to the market, you might not know that the ratio of green to red days during an uptrend is basically the same as the ratio of green to red days during a downtrend. The difference is your green days have higher magnitude of gains than the magnitude of the losses on the red days. But the number of days, green versus red, is relatively consistent in both uptrends and downtrends, telling us that an individual day, such as December 1st, doesn't tell us too much about the longer term trends. The moving averages can help us with that. December 1st, 2.17 p.m., intermediate term trend trying to turn back up with the 50. The 50 is above the 200, and the 200 recently turned up in June here as we migrate from a defensive posture to a more growth-oriented posture in our portfolios. We already showed the monthly box as of month end for the S&P. Similar situation with the NASDAQ, even though the NASDAQ has shown some relative weakness the past couple days, it was able to close and make a higher high above this high here as of November 30th. The longer price stays above the box, the higher the probability of good things happening. Similar situation with the Dow. We entered the box way back in 2013. We closed the month with a strong buying power candle at an important place, an area that had acted as resistance in the past. If we flip over to high, low, close bars here, you can see also the Dow closed near the high on the bar at the end of November. If we look at somewhat of a generic example here, we know from past videos that harder periods or consolidations are often followed by easier periods, harder followed by easier. If we add the labels back to the chart, and this chart came from this Twitter feed, you can see the Twitter handle here where my cursor is. This is a long-term chart of the S&P 500 index. And market fractals tell us that markets behave on monthly charts in pretty much the exact same manner as they do on one minute charts. Therefore, even this long-term consolidation here in the S&P 500 that dates back to the peak in the year 2000, the longer a market goes sideways, in this case, this is 13 years of sideways movement, the bigger the move that we can expect to get. In this case, you have eight years of sideways movement. This box here is significantly longer than this box here. After that, good things happened. Our intention is not to forecast here. Our intention is to say we should be open to better than expected outcomes as long as price stays above the 13-year consolidation box and as long as we have numerous long-term, short-term, and intermediate-term signals that show trends going from a bearish bias to a bullish bias, including the signal that had only occurred 10 previous times over the past 35 years. We know in the present day, our generic and for illustrative purposes, only 30, 40, and 50 week on the S&P 500 looks good here. This is indecisive. This looks better December 1st. You can see the turn that we've been talking about. This is weekly SP high beta relative to SP 
low volatility. This favors defensive sectors. This is the transition over to economically sensitive sectors. You can see here we were indecisive heading into the election. And after the election, we've moved away from the green line. We've talked about how Trump's platform might benefit financials or XLF. The longer our market goes sideways, the bigger the move that we can expect to get. XLF for financials relative to the S&P 500 has been basing or going sideways for six years. It looks like we have a bullish breakout and a retest and a higher high. The longer we stay above the orange box, the better for XLF relative to SPY. Financials versus technology, calendar year 2006, 2016. The ratio recently broke a trend line that dates back to 2013. And it also took out this trend line that dates back eight years. Energy versus tech weekly going back to 2007. This is RSI down here. If we draw a line, this isn't a trend line. This is just price point to point price falls from this point to this point, RSI has a bullish divergence, the same point to point, instead of being lower, RSI is higher. This is telling us to be open to a period of XLE or energy outperforming VGT. Energy has been out of favor relative to technology for a long, long time. This is 2008 here. From a risk reward perspective, this could be a good entry point for energy relative to tech. If we flip it over tech versus energy, you can see tech has been leading for a long, long time. And now we have that discernible lower high in the ratio here and waning momentum on weekly RSI. Some other noteworthy moves. This is tech versus financials here. We have a trend line in favor of tech. It breaks down in favor of financials. Similar situation here. This ratio has favored technology over financials for several years. Now we have a bearish break of that upward sloping trend line, similar to this break here. And in this case, the ratio dropped after the break an additional 20% over the next nine months. That doesn't mean that's what's going to happen in the present day. It just speaks to deteriorating probabilities for this ratio. Just a gentle reminder that the term new all-time high can be scary, but markets can make new all-time highs for literally years. This is the S&P 500 in 1982. This is late 1999 on the right side of your screen. We also know in the present day that we've been frustrated, but this is another example of how markets typically work. Frustrating, big move, consolidate your gains. Big move, consolidate, big move. Consolidate, big move, consolidate, big move. The longer a market goes sideways, the higher the probability of a big move after that period. When markets are inside of these indecisive consolidation boxes, whether that occurs on a short time frame, an intermediate time frame, or a longer time frame, there's more uncertainty and risk in here, but once you break out either to the upside or to the downside, and when you're seeing numerous long-term signals similar to the signals that we've covered in recent weeks and months, this quote starts to apply once you leave the box. They tend to confuse short-term volatility with long-term risk. The longer the time period, the lower the risk of holding equities. People focus too much on the short term, week to week and month to month price changes and don't pay enough attention to the long term potential. As long as the facts that we have in hand look similar to the facts that we have in hand today, this quote really applies in terms of our view. If the data deteriorates and we move back into these boxes and these charts roll over and we get more indecisive again, which absolutely positively could happen, then shorter term risk management becomes more important because you can also get breaks from these boxes in a bearish manner and then really bad things can happen. Is it possible in the present day that we get another trend and momentum whipsaw? Yes, it is possible. 
And if that happens, the other charts in the market model won't miss it. We're not presenting monthly MACD to forecast anything. We're just covering the facts that we have in front of us today. And we ask, are we allocated properly based on the facts that we have in front of us today? As of the close on Friday, the answer was yes. However, we'll head into next week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time? The sub-models, we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The sub-models allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile, and the master CCM market model then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currencies, or any number of investment options. If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website, follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog, short takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital Channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.